Thank you. Actually, it's mostly um, all a, a general background of all of my uh, of the stuff that I could uh, do from, uh, since my uh, PhD. And okay. <laughs> and so uh, and uh, all the uh, most of uh, Asakura, Pandipudi, Komeras, and Destiny were my collaborators for all this work. So. The question, the question of this uh, work is the homogeneity of light. So, what does it mean actually? It's simple to understand that before life, you have very simple molecules, and these molecules had no, uh, didn't have any special uh, uh, symmetry. But from the moment that the molecules that are formed. Uh, uh, getting a little complex, they can have some kind of uh, of uh, asymmetry that is, they can be they can have a right form or a left form, and this by symmetry of course this one being synthesized uh, from uh, molecules that have no symmetry. Uh, the first molecules that were formed are, uh, were uh, synthesized as a mixture of right. And uh, left forms, and uh, left and right forms. Yes. Are you able to define that more clearly later on? I don't. Uh, uh, the better way. So you're now referring to the. Uh, the better way, actually, I w is uh, quite difficult. Is the fact that one molecule, at a, uh, if it's complex enough, actually, uh, if you take a molecule and uh, its image mirror, uh, its uh, image in a mirror. You can ob uh, you can obtain uh, a different molecules, and um, if uh, the the different forms since the two forms are different, we can define with a set of rules which one is right, which one is left. What is important actually is just that okay, if in life all the molecules uh, will have one unique. Forms. There will be either all right or all left, and the, the question is not that to know uh, what what we means uh, right or left, actually, but uh, all the molecules we acquire one unique configuration, and the question is to understand uh, how uh, we can spontaneously evolve from a system that has both right and left forms to a system that is only one configuration, and that creates uh, some kind of uh, symmetry making. And actually, we have some example of two molecules there that have two different forms. And if uh, right and left uh, uh, molecules uh, should have exactly the same uh, chemical properties, actually, as we say, uh, ourselves, we all cure, uh, we all make of only one configuration of molecules, when they interact with ourselves, we are able to make the difference. So typically, if we, I will show you them to you. Okay. If you smell one and the other, you will actually do totally different smell. So, okay, we, you can just uh, try them. Uh, and this is really the most simple way to for you to show that to, these two kind of molecules are actually different. But the absolute definition is, in some sense, of course, a, co a matter of convention. We, we need a, we always which need a convention. Which actually. is, to some extent, motivated by the uh, handedness in which polarized light is. For example, uh, yes, yes, uh, there is a definition based on that, or there is a definition now based or the really of the geometry in space of the molecules, uh, and all that depends on the based on convention. So the problem is how to understand we can have this symmetry breaking. The problem is that uh, if we are, um, have a set of molecules, we just wait, and we, when you wait with molecules, you reach an equilibrium. And when you wish an equilibrium, you always have the racemic state. Racemic state means that you have exactly the same quantity of right and left. And the reason is that the two molecules are exa exactly the same energy level. So whatever you do, you always end up with a mixture of the same quantity of right and left. If 
to take a live being that is built up with only one uh, only one family of molecules, when the animal dies, all the molecules will work right with, uh, with time and you just end up with a mixture of right and left. So what we need, if we want to obtain a chemical system that is uh, only that has only uh, 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 one configuration, is to build a non-equilibrium system. It means that inside this system, this chemical system, we have to input energy so that the energy, this energy, can uh, can make a dynamic inside the system, and so that the dynamic can stabilize the racemic state and to stabilize the homocular state. So that we can have a bifurcation to have uh, uh, an all uh, right or no left uh, world. And to describe this kind of uh, models, uh, there was a paper that was that uh, was written uh, in the in, a, in a 1953 by Frank. And it was a very theoretical paper that explained how it was possible to obtain uh, this uh, homochirality. And so, this model uh, is based on this very simple framework. It's, that is, just imagine we start from a molecule that is uh, not pure. She, does, she, can, she is neither uh, right or left. But this molecule can, by the reaction, Either transform in a left, uh, in a L form or a D form. A D form. So, uh, which is N and D is a common notation, uh, Levogir or Dextrogir, and so Levo is left, Dextro is right. It's just a convention, this one comes from Greek, Levo Dextro, Greek, I think, yes. And sometimes you have R, S, which is exactly the same, but it comes from the Latin. It's only different. So, we can have uh, this molecule that can be either L or D. So this is a synthesis step. Yeah, and we can have an autocatalytic step. It means that the L can help its own formation, while the D can also help its own formation. And the L and the D can mutually uh, destroy themselves to another compounds. And what is, what is interesting in this kind of system is that if we have a matter flow, that is, if we input some reactants and we just get the product outside of this system, this matter flow will generate dynamics inside and uh, because of the autocatalysis, actually, even if we start from a system that have no reason to be either uh, more in you know, one side or, or the other. Actually, you, it will, uh, you will obtain a replication. That is, from the moment, from uh, at the, uh, one point, the uh, one branch will disappear and all the uh, reactions will be performed in only one way. So, that is exactly that. So, no matter of flow, no thing happens. And at the moment, we have total replication. And it's uh, you can have uh, almost all L, all L or all D. So the problem of this kind of uh, theoretical network is that it could be applied only to very uh, limited uh, experimental systems, very simple systems, but typically the, uh, there are some crystallization systems or systems based on very, very specific uh, organic reactions. And this uh, it's not very good if we want to apply this uh, theoretical framework to what could happen on Earth. So the first problem is that we need an open flow. That is, we have some uh, molecules that are quite complex. We need to continuously build them and we need to continuously destroy them. And this is not very good if, uh, for prebiotic reactions because it would mean that uh, we would need to destroy molecules that are very costly, uh, that are very difficult to, to be built. So in the probiotic environment, this matter flow is mm, quite annoying. And there is also the problem that we need autocatalysis. And how obtain autocatalysis, autocatalysis? It's quite difficult. We need very specific uh, reactions, very complex reactions. And 
prebiotic world is quite simple molecules, so it means quite simple reaction. So how can we build autocatalysis uh, on the basis of very simple reactions? So this is also quite significant. So the purpose of my work was, okay, let's extend this product model uh, and to a way of a similar network but that can be applied to real chemistry and real chemistry based on very simple uh, molecules. And typically, uh, I work on the basis of amino acids. And amino acids are one of the most uh, simple uh, molecules that exist in the living, and that are key ones. And these are molecules that are known to exist, uh, typically uh, also in space. They were detected in lots of uh, places uh, outside of the Earth. So, I mean, what is a very interesting compound. So for that, I will just uh, uh, explain you how we can build the autocatalysis. Uh, I will explain you how it works on, on an example at, a, uh, at last time, which if I have time to, but uh, I will explain you uh, how this can work not, uh, uh, on a very large system where we can have some uh, inhomogeneity. So, how all, all that is working? Chemistry is all a, case, a question of, uh, of potentials. That is, you start with reactants that are, that have, uh, that are high in uh, chemical potential. And what you can do for that, all the reaction will be possible as long as you're going down in the uh, chemical potential. So typically, you have a reactant that can make the L and D molecules and up to uh, the um, to the products. And if we have this open flow, so these we continuously input the reactants, continuously output the products, we maintain the difference of, uh, um, of the chemical uh, potential and so that we continuously have these reactions and so that these uh, molecules can continuously uh, act as autocatalysts. They can continuously force the system to uh, evolve either on L or D. And this matter flow is very, is very important because if we cut the flow, the reactants disappear, uh, the products accumulate, and so all the system is going back to equilibrium. We do not have any more reactions and if we do not have the reactions, we do not have the, the dynamic of autocatalysis that can work, and so the system can just come back to the, um, to the right thing instead. So this is not good. We really need the open flow. So how to get rid of this open flow? But a very most simple stuff that we can do, we just have to recycle. We have products, so we just have to find a way to recycle the, uh, the uh, product into reactants. Of course, this will cost some energy, but if we can with input energy, we can have a continuous dynamics. That is, we can do that. So with the energy, we can pump the products back to reactants, and so that we can ensure that we continuously have a reaction flow, and also if we continuously have the reactions, we continuously have the autocatalytic uh, uh, reactions that occur, and so we can maintain the, the chemical uh, system in a all L or all D form. And actually that is also quite interesting, because if we do that, actually we are, gener we are generating cycles of reactions. And cycles are quite interesting, because if we have cycles, it can be a pathway to build the autocatalysis. So this is how it's working. So let's take three reactions. So we have natural uh, reaction from A to B and to C, and then C, we pump it back to A. So we generate cycle of reactions. This is pretty useless actually, okay, we just turn it around. But what if, just suppose that one of the compounds so is L, and what if this cycle is also able to generate another L? It means that what time we are making one cycle, 
we did another L. So if we did another L, this L is able to make another cycle. And so, at each cycle, this cycle has more of its own components. So this is autocatalysis. This cycle will grow. Will, uh, this uh, will grow and uh, etc. The problem is, we just look like that, it doesn't look like we are in chemistry because, okay, there is no max, there, uh, there is no mass conservation. So, okay, we need another reactor so that all the, uh, the mass of uh, the whole system is concerned. And so, with that, we have built a uh, network autocatalysis. We do not have anymore a real catalyst that will take a molecule and it creates its own purity. We have just one reaction, uh, succession of reactions. And after one cycle of reactions, one molecule of, of uh, L was able to transform R uh, into another L. And so we have this process, an irreversible process, an activated process that can act uh, as a real autocatalyst. Where does the excess energy go? Hmm? What do you mean? Energy. Yes? Where does it go? What, what to do where? These uh, arrows. Uh, the, uh, the energy which you are pumping. Yes. Where does it go? Actually, but for example, it can go there. Uh, actually, when I'm speaking of energy, for the moment, it's, yes, it's very general. It can be lots of kind of energy. So, for example, this energy can mean that, in this example, um, the cycle is actually coupled to another uh, to another kind uh, of reaction. So we have actually a matter, of, a flow matter of energetic uh, molecules and, uh, out, uh, and uh, we output some weight molecules. But this energy can be different. Maybe it can be some uh, photochemical uh, energy so that the input energy is just, you just input photons that are making the sun coming round. Yes, and some example, uh, I will talk about, uh, I think maybe it's, yes, and this, in this example, this energy can be just mechanical energy. So, actually, this is uh, what happens in a real example, a very simple example. Uh, it's just uh, uh, start from molecules that are, um, that are not pure but that are able to form crystals that can, and, uh, that can be cured. That is, we can have either uh, right or left uh, crystals. And these crystals can grow, they, they can take several uh, other natural molecules, they, they can grow. And we have a mechanical action, we just crush continuously the crystals so that we break all the big crystals in smaller ones. And so that it says that we generate uh, cycles, and all these cycles take natural molecules, and they generate uh, crystal, uh, QR crystals. And we have the R crystals that make other R crystals, and S crystals that make other S crystals. So now we have two cycles, one, uh, one right cycle and one left cycle. And what is interesting there is that these two cycles they are autocatalytic cycles. They each one fight to uh, to increase themselves, but they are also fight, they are also uh, fighting against each other. Because when the air perform uh, one cycle, is pumping uh, A and still pumping also S to so M because all the reactions are equally reactive. So actually, actually, inside this whole network, we have. Uh, some uh, positive, uh, we have some positive feedbacks. Each cycle uh, acts as a positive feedback for itself, and we also have negative feedback between each others. I'm trying to understand this uh, step with two A here. I mean, uh, I yeah. would have understood it if you produced some waste, actually, some waste which consists of a mixture of the of the two. Yeah. Of R and uh, R and S in this case. Yeah. Uh, but you, that you don't do that. So what? Uh, how do you actually get rid of? Um, oh. Yes. How do you get rid of the S's altogether? 
There must be a, I mean, you're uh, cons- yes, exactly. So yes, I think we have the liquid, we have yes, the liquid so between the A, uh, and, uh, A 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 Exactly. So okay. how does this step work? You are somehow changing the calendar of the crystal or what? Mm, yeah, actually, if, it's, uh, if you wait to reach the equilibrium, so you have a racemization. And uh, uh-huh. spontaneous loss of currency, you mean? <coughs> uh, yes, yes. It means that actually you can have the, you can have the racemization of the, the system, uh, of all the, the stuff, actually. This is actually all not real crystals, but it's maybe not, it's mainly the, um, actually a, a seed of crystals. Mm-hmm. And these are, uh, actually this is a model, so this will be the first seed of a crystal, so you can have uh, the first association between molecules, and when you, once you can have the start of association of molecules, you can have some chirality, and that uh, you form real crystals. And the mechanical action can break back uh, the crystals in small elements that can be dissolved back into A, or that can form other crystals, actually. And so it's the mechanical action just uh, allow to to uh, break the crystals back to the small seeds and the small oh, seeds yeah. can be ready So R2 is actually the seed already? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and so, and so, okay, so with that we generate uh, a system that looks like the initial France model. But what is interesting is that we do not uh, need any more uh, matter flow. We just need the energy flow, the crushing of the crystals. We don't have any more direct autocatalysis, but only uh, network autocatalysis that is based on very simple uh, steps. And we do not have any more thermal inhibition, but instead we have just a competition uh, between the cycles. And so we can have uh, a way to build uh, complex networks that are based on very simple rules and with these simple rules you can generate uh, some complex behavior and that can lead uh, to bifurcations so in this example you can have bifurcation to other all A's or all A world uh, alright and exactly now the vision that you can, we can have on the basis so this description is that we do not m- anymore describe the system in terms of molecules or reactions, but rather we can describe the system in terms of groups of reactions, in terms of cycles of reaction or in terms of flow of reactions. And it can be much more powerful just to describe this the system not in a static way, but in a dynamic way. Uh, that is, we put energy, the energy uh, form some cycles, the cycles are able to fight between each other, we have some competition between them, and we can have a dynamic at least to bifurcation phenomenon, we can have the evolution of a complex network towards several uh, possible uh, states. Uh, I mean, are you assuming the left and the right have exactly the same energy now? Yes, we always exactly. assume that. We always assume that. Yeah. Yes, yes. The answer is where it, uh, it might it might exist a slight difference, but yeah, for the I always always um, considering that we have a perfect symmetry between R and S. Always, yes, yes. But that's not true. Sadly, practically, it is true. Ten to minus fifteen in units. Yes, 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 yes. That's very small. Yes. But aren't you talking about something that? drastically happens here in this bifurcation, I mean, that it goes in one way or the other way. Yes. Couldn't that be traded by a very small... But actually, if you... Uh, there were some calculations calculation that is performed. But so, if you have this kind of bifurcations, yeah. it means that uh, if in, the post, in the case of you have exactly the same energy, you have 50% of chance to have one and 50% yes. chance to have the other one. In the case of the... In the case of you have a slight difference of energy, Actually, you, you will have 50.0001% chance to have one and 49.999% chance to have the other one. So, okay, you might have a slight difference of energy, but it won't change lots of things for the moment you have this kind of mechanism. 
So if you, so in other words, you will have obvious levels of fluctuations. The fluctuations will become smaller and smaller the higher the concentration is. Yeah. But you need an extremely high concentration in order for the, yeah. uh, for, I mean, you, the square of the number of molecules is, is basically the level of the error that you yeah. have in well, the Well, actually, yeah, I think the, uh, I, I made the calculations, I was also the, the calculation, actually, yes, and uh, just the statistic, if you want to be able to see the, um, <laughs> the difference of energy uh, from the difference of, uh, to see the difference of energy uh, if you want the difference of energy to be more important than the statistical fluctuations, you would need uh, several tons of few uh, chemical compounds. This is uh, to have an idea of what it means, actually. And it all must be able to actually react with each other. Yeah. yeah. So it must not be too far away from each other, of course. That's impossible. So actually, generally, um, statistical fluctuation or much more important, or should be much more important at the moment at, that you have uh, this amplification mechanism. But you're yeah. an infinite equilibrium. I mean, you're always in this open closest. Yes. Equilibrium is just a secret base anyway. Yes. But you st always yeah. start from a system that, uh, yeah. Uh, how about the ionization energy? Which can differ a lot, can it? What can differ a lot? The ionization energy. Mm. Is that about the same or can that change? Right. Well, I don't see when it can right. change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the way exactly the same molecules, but the right and left. It's a mirror, mirror picture. I mean, you switch the CST group somewhere, whatever. I mean, yeah. that, that you can't, uh, you can rotate them and you don't read each other, mm -hmm. so they are unique. But the energy difference of ours is just. So if you want to have a difference of energy, it means that the space itself, the law of physics, then says can or able to make the difference between a right form and a left form. So that's, it's, it's really not the violation of weak interactions or this kind of stuff. So it's really, really very, very thin effects. Yeah. Okay. So, but, uh, okay. So, yes. So, I was just saying that to, uh, if you want to study this kind of system, we can describe this uh, chemical system in terms of uh, flows of reaction or cycles of reactions. And this leads to the description, to a description that is very close to the uh, description of uh, reaction networks that are the metabolisms. That is, the reaction networks that are uh, occurring in all uh, life being. And it's interesting because actually these metabolisms are very studied. Uh, in biochemistry, and there is uh, the, a formalism that is uh, really used for that. But I know, how, how many times do I have left? I don't know. Uh, I have now. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. So maybe I will skip that because, okay. Actually, there is a very interesting, but uh, it is very, very mathematical. So, yeah, yeah. But the interest is that when you have a uh, reaction network, you can easily decompose it like flows and just to see how uh, the flows can generate cycles. And you can just uh, see how the cycles are fighting to each other. So this is, a more, uh, this is an example in a more complex system. And this is a system, so this time that is built uh, on amino acid uh, reactivity. And uh, we have only very simple reactions uh, uh, of the amino acids. That is, we just start for amino acid, so very simple compounds, quite, quite common, but they are poorly reactive. So we input energy and we activate them in a certain form. We know how this can be performed even on the, the primitive earth. Okay, so no problem. And it, when they're activated, they, uh, they are able to polymerize. That is, uh, that is they can form uh, chains. For example, you can form the LL, the DT, the DL, or the LT. Of course, you can you can't uh, not only you can only make a uh, chain of two, but you can make in, you can make chain of three or four, etc., etc. So you can with that perform a lot. Uh, of molecules. Excuse me, would yes. that be what you call racemic or something? 
So what, what, what the metrics that you make L, L, D, the difference to What you make means you have the same quantity of L, L, and of D, uh, D, D, and the same quantity of D, L, and L, D. Okay, but you can have difference of concentration between this one and this one because they are not st uh, strictly the same. Okay. But uh, there's a process called with proximization. Yeah. Uh, that's what you mean. And, and the randomization or, or uh, optimization means that you have uh, the inversion of only of one uh, of, the, uh, of the amino acid inside the chain. For example, the A A can uh, transform into a DA. The A can transform into a D, etc., etc., etc. And so you can have all these conversions. And you can have the, the destruction of all this chain just to generate back the amino acids. So all that are very simple reactions were based on the uh, reactivity of amino acids. And these are quite well-known uh, react, uh, reactions. And so, globally, this is what happens uh, about the energy. We can have very activated forms, and we can generate uh, all that. And so, we can generate these cycles of reactions. So, what happened? This is a reaction network. This is a more simple reaction network that we can build on the basis uh, of this uh, uh, of this uh, chemistry, but we just uh, we are just stopping uh, on the formation of uh, D peptides of uh, the D mouse. We, uh, we do not take into account uh, the three, four, etc., etc. But you can see this is already quite complex. But if we look well inside that, we have loops. That is, we can see very well. So okay, yes, sir. So we can have uh, activations, we can have the formation of a dimer, so we can have a dimerization, and we can have the hydrolysis. So this is an example of how inside a quite complex reaction network, we can have the formation of these autocatalytic uh, loops. Typically here, we have a L, but globally what is doing this L? The L takes a D, and it transforms the, the D into another L. So this is very interesting because it means that, thanks to these reactions, if we have an excess of L, the, uh, this reaction, what well, this set of reactions, will allow to increase again the excess of L. So this will bring some instabilities inside the system. Of course, well, this system is quite complex. There are lots of such cycles that can exist. I don't know. I, I won't uh, detail you exactly, but you can have molecules that will bring some positive feedback. You can have molecules that can bring some negative feedback. So if you have an excess, it will be, with this reaction, an excess will be tend to be an end. With reaction, an, end, uh, an excess will be tend, will, uh, uh, will, will tend to be uh, decreased. Etc. We can have lots of loops, and you can have some of these mm, uh, null loops that is, they are doing nothing except that they take energy and they just dissipate them. But all these loops are interesting, all these loops are existing inside the system, and they are interacting. Between the, negative, each other. the negative loop on the previous page was that actually an uphill reaction? An uphill, I mean, thermodynamically an uphill reaction. It's not the same as the other it's one. It's not exactly the same because no, yes. no, no, it's not. It's not the same just because we have uh, the activation is in this right. way and the activation is this way. Yes, I mean, and so it's not exactly the same. We can have difference of rates between the, these two, and that's why it's interesting. I mean, you you were saying on a previous page that the that an uh, dimer yeah. uh, with two different yeah. uh, polarities. Uh, is higher in energy than one which is homochiral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heterochiral is higher in energy than... than yes, yes. Yeah, actually, it's... Uh, that's the case if in, the, in the upper posit positive feedback loop, but the opposite yeah. in the negative one. Yeah, so yeah. So that's why I was thinking it's a thermodynamically uphill reaction. Well, it's... All this, but, uh, we have... Yeah. It's all the cycles are different and all of... Um, uh, at different rates, and yeah, it only will depend yeah. on the... Uh, but less, 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 less likely, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I ask you this, because I don't understand this law. Yeah. You come in with a D. Yeah. And the then you suddenly you have a D, and where is that L coming from? Oh, from down there. There. Yeah. Actually, yeah. you have a D, you activate the D. This is the meaning of the energy coming. 
and this energy allows the D to be stacked to the L to form a DL. Yes, yeah, so and then it's transferred L. Mm -hmm. And then one L goes out and the other one is recycled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but then I wonder, going from DL to LL, yeah. how, that, how does that happen? The D into an L, we have the inversion of the D, the D into an L. That is, uh, the D have one, see, it's a reaction that uh, can always uh, uh, occur, that uh, the right can become left and the left become right. Yes, but what is the mechanism? <coughs> the mechanism is, actually, uh, when you have the, um, <coughs> the mechanism there, actually, the chemical mechanism is that uh, mo uh, molecules are, um, yeah, yeah it's, okay. You have uh, this this kind of molecules, and you have this kind of reaction actually. So you have, you have uh, hydrogen, and so you have the molecule that become flat, and uh, it's uh, just this kind of reaction actually. You have uh, this uh, tetrahedron that can be uh, reversed because the uh, proton can be uh, taken from one side. And another one can be an input, uh, you know, etc. And this requires uh, M. Uh, actually, it kind of uh, what happens is theoretically this, actually not theoretically, but practically, uh, practically this uh, can occur everywhere. But the fact is that once uh, you have formed uh, a chain, this reaction is much much more effective uh, on one side of the chain. The DL is excited at that point. I mean, the DL is very... The D was excited, but when it's copper, it's no more excited. energy to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, uh, kinetically, this reaction, the inversion of one amino acid in this specific position is much, much faster than all the other ones. But couldn't you equally likely have DL going to be D? Yes, yes, it can be, but uh, the reaction of DL that makes LL is more than 10 times faster than the DL that is uh, making the DD. That's what... Uh, you have all kinds of uh, kinetic uh, parameters. Uh, Nemo has calculated them. Yes. Uh, I mean, if you, uh, if you uh, draw uh, one and two amino acids, everything will become much more clearer. Because <laughs> right now it's very abstract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you just show the position... It, it actually depends. Yeah. That this proton is easier to pull than the other I never know how to present that. When I... Sometimes <laughs> people... There are some people when I, I make it more complex than just an L and a D, they say, oh, it's, it's too much chemistry, I don't understand that. <laughs> and sometimes people who are on the contrary, they want all the atoms and say, okay, it's more clear like that. I never know what is more simple for non chemists. Yeah, it's right. Okay. But this is still the, to go from the DL to the LL. Yes, it's still possible. Uh, no, no, no. To go in the future, yes. Uh, the DL to the LL, yes. Uh, it's still very, uh, I mean, uh, Mm -hmm. Very slow process, right? Yeah, it, it, it depends what you mean by slow. The DL is excited. You pumped the whole thing. You didn't get rid of the energy in the DL. Mm -hmm. oh, no, 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 no. So you need to excite it. Yeah, it's excited. Add all, add all, yeah. As far as I understand. So once it's reacted, it's not excited anymore. No, no. It's, it's not. No. This state is not really excited. I say if you. Uh, this can reaction. Typically, you can pump it. Uh, if you put the DL in water at 80 degrees, uh, in few weeks, you can have uh, spontaneously as uh, inversion uh, in both directions. It's quite fast reaction. All the inversion of the uh, of the monomers, etc., are very slow processes. But the inversion of that can take only few weeks. These are quite fast reactions, actually. Yeah. But maybe sorry, but actually, the all behind all these cycle of derivations are lots of kinetic parameters. And, uh, and all is uh, all is playing, and uh, of course all the reaction exists. Okay, so okay, so just to see how this is working. Actually, what is important is so we are inputting energy. So we have a flow of energy. So this is a wire. We have a flow of these x and y compounds. No matter the other important is that they generate flows uh, of uh, activated amino acids. And each one of the activated amino uh, of the activated amino acid can generate uh, uh, can react on either L or D. So we have a, a flow of uh, formation of LL. We have a flow of formation of LD. 
Okay, we have the flow of formation of DD, of the air, etc. So actually, we have a flow of energy, and inside the reaction network, we have some. Um, uh, uh, the, the energy is divided and uh, distributed into the several compounds. And what is governing that? Actually, all that can be uh, uh, how the um, uh, how the weights of reaction are divided are dependent of kinetic parameters. They are dependent of uh, the zero selectivity of reaction. So typically, uh, the formation of the LL will be faster than the formation of, uh, of LD, and this can be characterized by the parameter alpha, etc., etc. And so we can determine exactly uh, how the energy is, distribu is distributed inside the reaction network. Uh, okay, uh, and each one of these this flows. So we have globally flows of activated energy that can generate several cycles. And typically, we can have this flow that can be seen like that that will generate so these uh, this kind of cycles. Uh, we can have the same flow that can generate this kind of cycles, no, etc. We have that actually inside the system. That is, we have a total flow of energy that is divided once, that is divided two, and here C two, and each one of the flow actually uh, generates uh, two uh, two cycles. So inside the whole system, all the energy is generating these eight cycles. And each one of these cycles uh, can be more or less uh, important depending on uh, the kinetic parameters, depending on the different selectivities uh, of the reactions. Your kinetic parameters, that's experimental parameters, that you take them from the lab? <coughs> no, yes, actually, what I, what, uh, it, was a large part, it was a large part of my PhD, it also was also a large part of the of the work that I performed in Japan, that is, the purpose is not to just develop theoretical, uh, theoretical uh, networks, but to link them with uh, real experiments. Yeah, and yes, yes, I determine the now most, I think I know quite most of the kinetic parameters, so at least I can have a good idea of all the parameters, and at least the, para the parameters of uh, theoretical activity. So, it is, it is known. It is not very precisely known in all the cases, but globally uh, it's quite known. Do you, yeah. do you need the uh, absolute parameters or is it enough with relative ones? Relative ones are good to have an idea of will it work, will it not work. If we want to be sure it will work, there's no problem, we need absolute parameters. But sometimes it can be good to just to have an idea to say, okay, it will be Okay, so rather this reaction that will be faster uh, to this one, or this reaction will be faster to this one. This is important too because we can't determine all the kinetic parameters, and so when when you can't have the absolute parameter, relative parameters are very good too, actually. Yes. Okay, and so knowing these parameters, we can know how uh, these are fighting. So this is typically the equation that we obtain. This can seem quite complex, but this uh, is actually the evolution of the global enantiomeric excess as uh, a function of time. And what is interesting is that uh, we have one constant terms that uh, is uh, multiplied by the enantiomeric excess to the power of 3, and minus a constant term that to multiply the electric uh, to the power of, uh, to the power of one. And what is under actually we don't really care because what we are looking for is steady states. And we just need to know when this equals zero. And this is actually uh, exactly the same uh, type of equation that we obtain in the case of the simple Franks model. So it means that with this, kind of, with this kind of system, we will have very similar uh, behavior than the Frank system. And that is, with this kind uh, of uh, equations, 
when does it come to zero? If we need the steady state is either the Lapimet Republic X is zero, that is the Racing state, or for certain uh, for a given set of kinetic parameters alpha beta gamma, we can have two uh, different two uh, uh, steady states of the Emanopermic X sets uh, that are non zero. And of course the global set of the equation just remains totally symmetric. And so it means that in some conditions, we can have the dislocation and we have we can have steady states that are not pressing. Yes. I was wondering how far we have gamma here. Yes, are yes. These rate coefficients? Actually, the, um, the, it's, um, it's relative, the relative difference between some uh, kinetic rate. Alpha means uh, it's uh, the kinetic rate of forming N and divided by the kinetic rate for forming N D. Uh, they can understand. Uh, gamma is the uh, kinetic rate uh, of uh, LL becoming uh, the L divided by the kinetic rate of the L giving uh, LL. And it's always uh, the relative rate of each reaction. It's uh, the stable selectivity uh, of all the states, actually. And so the important one, would you agree with that, is actually alpha, which uh, is the asymmetry in so alpha is the thermoselectivity of polymerization, beta is the symmetry, the thermoselectivity of depolymerization, and gamma is the stereoselectivity of epimerization. Yes. So these so all these three parameters are the different thermoselectivity of the three fundamental states. So if alpha is zero, that means you produce only D D or L L, and if alpha is one, you produce only D L and no. L D. No, actually as this uh, divided. Alpha, alpha means uh, alpha equal one is uh, you form as, ma as many uh, LL than LD. I see. Yeah. And uh, the Excel is uh, um, total, it's between zero or infinite values of alpha that you are, uh, you are forming. Ah, Either all LL or all LD or the L. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there's a, a real stupid question. Yes. Uh, what is the relative energy assume that these alpha, beta, gammas are independent from each other, or is it known that they are independent? Mm, good question. Uh, uh, you can separate them, yes, because actually you can relate them to the difference of energy uh, of each compound. Uh, no, mm, no, the gamma is related, the gamma is totally independent, and quite, actually, it's, it's quite a difficult question, but mm, I mean, there, are, there, are, there are just parameters, and actually there are they are fixed parameters. Measure it's just that really something that can be tuned easily. It's something that you determine experimentally, actually. So, uh, yes, yes. It's not, these are not parameters. They are, they are constants. They are not moments. Maybe you're not punching my issues. But maybe you're asking Confidence. if you actually change the temperature, for example. Then, of course, uh, for this kind of stuff, yeah, maybe. Then they we, I don't know. I don't know if you change the temperature, everything will move. Yeah. So, but how this will move, I don't know exactly. And but I don't. Do you think it's? If, I don't think it will change anything in there because. Or I mean, it also is of course different for different amino acids. Yeah. And but for one given set of experiments, the parameters alpha, beta, gamma will be fixed and won't evolve during all the reactions. It's it's really fixed for a given set of uh, for a given experiment. Oh, alpha, beta, gamma, only you have one value and won't change for, uh, have no reason to change. It's good, it can be seen as constant. Yeah. So, and, uh, okay, and do, depending on these uh, parameters, we can uh, determine for what kinetic parameter we can have systems that can uh, operate the bifurcation, and we have the, this kind of profile, and what this means is that when uh, we have this set of uh, parameters, uh, the positive feedbacks are able to overcome uh, the negative feedbacks. And in the other case, uh, it's not working. And so it's only in this situation that it can work. Okay. Sorry, uh, can I ask you something? Yeah. So you have this coupled, uh, uh, you have kinetic uh, Equation. Yeah. So you have a couple of differential equations that you solve and you get this. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm not solving uh, the 
evolution. I'm just looking for the steady states. How do you get that? What are the equations now? Now, this question actually, you just have the, the, evol uh, the variation of the enantiomeric excess as a function of time is equal to that. We just have that. And so we're just looking when is the global enantiomeric excess stable. That, that, uh, we are not looking for, evolution, for the evolution, we are just looking for the steady state. But that's, I mean, you originally had. Um at the minimum is eight equations, right? And mm -hmm. the eight equations you reduce already into this. this yeah. Eight, eight first order differential equations. I think so, yeah, it's the minimum. Mm -hmm. the well, well, eight, eight equations, yeah. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. First order of the... First order yeah, but you have uh, some... Uh, you have some coarse parameters and it's quite complex equations. It's not linear equations. Yeah, yeah. Because you are always have a one concentration multiplied by another concentration, so but okay, but first order, but it's first order because also, yes, it's only dependent of the first derivative of concentration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You solve it, you get this. But I don't solve them from the set of equation. I I arrive, the, I uh, changing the parameter, and I just can arrive to this equation. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, so it follows uh, this kind of uh, resolution. Okay. And so, actually, so what means from the set, what does it mean? Uh, the, uh, it means that we need the homochiral peptide to be thermodynamically more stable than the heterochiral peptide. We need the homochiral peptide to be isolated faster than, than the heterochiral uh, peptides. And we need the homochiral uh, uh, to be also formed faster than the heterochiral peptide. But we, we need some uh, competition between all the parameters. So, but, okay, so this is very um, qualitati uh, qualitative. Uh, but what is interesting is that uh, it's, co uh, it's uh, compatible with the kinetic parameters that I could uh, obtain uh, experimentally. The problem is actually it is mainly qualitatively compatible because sometimes uh, we would re it would require very much stronger stereoselectivities, etc. Uh, so, uh, what we can learn from that is that on the basis of this very simple model, we can know that it, may, it can be uh, uh, it, it can be compatible with the experiments. But now is the, the question is to know what set of uh, what kind of amino acid should be very should be good. For that to work, what would be the good, uh, the, the good um, uh, experimental conditions to have the good uh, kinetic parameters and so on? But all what uh, for the moment, okay, it's qualitatively it may work. So um, if we want also to analyze that, though maybe I think that someone we are uh, we can eventually. Yes. You can, oh, we can calculate all the energy related to that. So this is the diffusion pattern that you obtain, because actually we need the energy that flows inside the system to be distributed into the loop. So it's working only in a given set of conditions. And uh, maybe it's just a so fast work about what happens uh, if the system is not homogeneous. Because all that, we just assume that Okay, it's uh, all that is working in one place and all is well mixed, etc. And then the problem is, okay, but if this is occurring on Earth, what happens if we have some L that's, uh, that is appearing here and some D that's appearing there? And what will it lead? What can this can lead to? Is this will start to just a patchwork of L and D everywhere, or can we have the diffusion of uh, one unique uh, curity? for all over the, the system. Um, okay, so for that actually, then the mo this is a model that I uh, made uh, in, uh, during my um, postdoc in Tokyo. It's just to, tell, to study uh, the crystallization. Uh, it's a crystallization and that is, uh, we start for substrate and stochastically we can add some elements uh, on top of each other. And each one of these elements can be either right or left. And uh, when one element can come, it will either become right or left, depending on uh, all its neighbors. 
<coughs> and uh, so we can have so glasses so we have here solar uh, so, uh, crystal and the element can come we can uh, they can several can perform several uh, steps and uh, okay very quickly we obtain this kind of evolution so I mm, I don't uh, if you really see the difference of color so now it's all green and okay we start from a moment that is a mixture of uh, green and red and very quickly oh, you see the, oh, we see better to this one okay and so okay we have the spots that is growing and we will have uh, okay we have some the mixture and we have, the, we have the red that is finally spreading all over so it means that we start from something totally random and the, on the basis of you have m lots of red, you have more and more uh, chance to add some red, and etc. And this actually leads to the diffusion to all, all over the, to spread all over the, the system. But actually, depending on the kinetic parameters, um, we have lots of uh, we can have some uh, instabilities. There is uh, sometimes. If one red, you have only uh, green, and if one red come, if the one red come, you can ease another red to come. So now we have two red, and if you have two red, it will it will uh, uh, increase again the possibility to have a red one. And so actually you have instability because when some someone can grow, it can appear, and, but uh, because it's surrounded by much more green, it can disappear. So we can have some uh, stabilities. And sometimes, so we have we have a lot of instabilities, and sometimes the instabilities, okay, can as big as the whole system, and you can have some uh, inversion, so it can be to, to uh, only one configuration, and it's up to another one, etc., etc. And okay, and sometimes you can also have some chaotic behavior. The, okay, so we have red and green, and okay. But to, to the point that okay, just to is this actually a quantitative calculation in the sense that you know the size of the domain? Yes, yes, yes. This is so a how, how big of a domain should one think of? Yes. This is a dimension. It, it was uh, 500 uh, by 500. That's some, uh, yes, uh, 266. That's 266 by 266 uh, what? square. What? Of what? Of, uh, of uh, independent elements. Yeah, but I mean, there must uh, you must be able to associate a size with this in centimeters ah, yeah, or something. Mm -hmm. Eventually. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, mm, to relate that with the real uh, um, crystals. Actually, it's yes, minimal. Uh, generally, we just think of minimal uh, growing units, and the minimal growing units is uh, the minimum. Minimum size uh, of uh, minimum size of crystals that can be uh, organized mm -hmm. to be white right or left. And I don't know exactly how many uh, molecules it represents actually. Yeah. Uh, right. I don't know exactly. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so actually. Globally, we have that. If we had no specialization, we have uh, uh, only a very homogeneous system, we would have only the black line uh, for uh, representing the bifurcation. That is something that is totally what they mean, then bifurcation, and then we have, uh, we have also uh, partially homogeneous uh, state. And when we add these dimensions, actually, we can observe actually a lot of uh, a lot of uh, fluctuations so actually all, um, in red red just represents actually what is difficult um, the um, precision of uh, there are too many fluctuations to really determine uh, what is uh, the average uh, and uh, in yellow is uh, the fluctuations that can be determined. This really represents um, statistical fluctuations due to the small size of the system. And in, what is very uh, interesting is that in green, that is represents that sometimes you can have this uh, this instability that occurs. So this is just statistical fluctuations, but then this you have this uh, instabilities that can grow, etc. And you have this zone of this where this instabilities. 
So instabilities that are larger than the just the statistical fluctuations that are able to, in this case, so if they are bigger than the system themselves, then you can have the, um, the swap from one state to another. Uh, okay, so actually what is interesting in this kind of system is that generally um, we can uh, have uh, the possibility to uh, have one configuration that wins uh, to the whole system. So this was, so what I performed was for the, the crystallization systems, but this could be also determined uh, for Frank-like models when adding uh, diffusion. So we have a reaction diffusion uh, system and uh, it could be seen by other, other authors, it was performed by uh, Professor Saito. Uh, also in this case, we can always observe the diffusion of one unique configuration in the whole system. But of course all this is, uh, it's still, uh, still to be developed. It, it's always, it always has been uh, me uh, measured on very specific models, uh, etc. So, what all the conclusion or what I've, uh, I could say? I think that globally the first is that okay, we can observe the emergence of the homoparity uh, from from a free system, and so. The other point is that this emergence can be built on the basis of very simple mechanism. Uh, and the, what is interesting is that when we build this on the basis of very simple uh, reactions, we are leading to uh, describe uh, reaction networks that really looks like metabolism, uh, the metabolism system. That we have energy flowing, we have cycles of reaction, and we have the generation of autocatalysis. And so this is very interesting because this can lead to uh, a, a good vision uh, of the uh, origin of life. And uh, to, we can see um, the dynamic of the network, we can see uh, an evolving reaction network, uh, and uh, this can uh, <coughs> And uh, we can see so the emergence of life as one, as one mechanism uh, that uh, can lead from a totally random network to a more structured network. And we can imagine uh, how in a complex network we have this succession uh, of uh, reaction networks that are fighting and that are getting more and more and more complex. And it can be an, uh, an interesting way to study uh, the origin of life. So. I'm done with that, so okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Question, please. Yeah? Uh, so, I mean, what you're saying is, I mean, your, your uh, thesis, let's say, is that homoterality in itself is necessary for life. And yes. The question is, how do you develop it, in a sense? <coughs> yeah, yeah, it's right that I didn't spoke about that. Uh, Actually, uh, I think that now about everyone in the field of original life agrees to the fact that, yes, we need the homoterity before life. The reason, the reason, there is a very simple reason that, for that. Uh, actually, life, to have life, we need very effective uh, reactions. We need a very effective catalyst. Uh, we need a... Uh, uh, this kind of proteins, kind of enzymes, etc. And to have this kind of very efficient uh, reactivity, we need molecules that have a very structured form, uh, a very structured shape, uh, etc. And if you want the structurations of molecules, homochirality is very important because the shape of molecules, of macromolecules, uh, is given by the, uh, the shape of the small elements in themselves. So if you have only small elements that have all the same uh, basic shape, it can give a global shape to a molecule. But if you have a randomness of right and left within the, within the structures of the molecules, it's, it, uh, it will increase some randomness to the structure. And so it's difficult to imagine how we can structure a large structure if the base of the structure is totally random. So you need at first uh, some kinds of order. So generally, it's the idea we have uh, generally in this uh, industry. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, yeah. Put on your first. Yes, uh, just to see whether, whether I got this right. Uh, in, in your eight cycle system, mm -hmm. when you know your alpha, beta, gamma, mm -hmm. what you know then is that under certain circumstances you will have this bifurcating yeah. behavior, but you don't know which way it, it is going to go. Yes, exactly, yeah. That actually uh, is what we are, the only thing that we know is that if you perform several experiments, in 50% of cases, yeah. you will have red, and 50% of the cases, you will have left, of course. So that's dependent on other stochastic... Yes, yes this is dependent on the stochastic uh, of the experiments. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, not an issue uh, for understanding uh, our one configuration emerge, because uh, if at the moment of somewhere it can happen, even if somewhere else it happens, actually, uh, as, at the end, only you have the diffusion only one, uh, uh, you have the emergence of only one uh, configuration at the end. So, okay, you have first, first fluctuation, but when you're, when you're finished, no problem, you have only one, uh, so it's not a problem. Okay. I was wondering, you yeah. mentioned that homocarity is a sort of prerequisite for life. Yeah. Does it matter if it's D or M? No. So there could be... Yeah, I, there, uh, actually that there would be no reason we could be uh, totally the opposite of what we are. What we need, we just need to have only one configuration so that we can have speculation. But we can be uh, we can be us, uh, it doesn't really matter. We just need a unity. To be so if you the next slide, right? hmm? the next slide will change. Can be more difficult of a complex change once it's said, uh, okay. But if you had a separate genesis of life, as somebody who was the other way around, yeah. and you would give them these two bottles, yeah. they would think actually the citron smells like pine tree and the other way around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe the are the ratio yeah. or other. We don't know. Helen? I have a question. Yes. To what extent, in reality, does the homochirality rely on the fact that we you're looking at carbon-based yeah. organic chemistry? Yes, exactly. Yes. And to, to what extent? Because I mean, there, there are we know there are there are, are species on our own planet that actually aren't based on carbon chemistry. We have bacteria based on sulfur chemistry. We have bacteria based on. It's, uh, it's not the plants. It's not the earth. Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, yes, but the the no. yes. Yeah, the basic, the way all the basic uh, elements are all based on carbon chemistry. No, we have, we have, we have life on our own planet which is not based on carbon chemistry, it's based on sulfur chemistry. What do you so mean by that? It exists in, in a very extreme environment, extreme and fast, and it's not no, I think Yeah, but they are based on the source of energy. Yes. But the structure of the, the pet is uh, carbon. No, they're not, though. No, yeah, we'll talk about it later, but it's not true. There, there are sulfur-based... Mm. So they don't have... But sulfur, you, can, you, you know, can't have anything based on sulfur, so you need a carbon structure. That's what everyone thinks, but it's not true. I mean, there are papers on it in the biological... Uh, but... but yeah. sulfur-based materials. I don't see how it can be possible. They, they're producing sulfur. I mean, instead of having photosynthesis, which produces oxygen, you have the chemosynthesis, which produces sulfur. Hmm. So that's yes. totally different. It's still, it's still life which is based on carbon, but it's instead of producing oxygen, it produces yes. sulfur. It's just replacing oxygen by sulfur. Yes, yes, but I, they are still based on the exactly the same uh, mineral acids. Mm. Your models will still hold anyway. Mm -hmm. It's the same models that describe the, doesn't matter what is the basis, no? But actually, you don't have currency. You need to uh, curiosity, all the curiosity, most of curiosity, Generally, it's based on uh, carbon. So you can imagine other kind of quality. But actually, it's difficult to imagine a life, a life that could be based uh, on other things that carbon chemistry. Yes, yes, yes. But silicon would have, if we imagine based on silicon, but silicon has some, uh, about the same reactivity. Well, and we could point have, point. yeah, we could have quality based on silicon. So why not? Yes. I yeah. Yeah. So, if, uh, 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 a chemist, if a chemist wants to induce uh, an asymmetry, they will throw in an asymmetric uh, catalyst. Yes. Right? Yes. All these uh, 
Hmm? The basis of this, uh, what you have told us, is spontaneous. Yes, it's spontaneous. Yes, spontaneous. Yeah. So what about the possibility that something like uh, you have some asymmetry in your uh, yes, in your yeah, already, and like I don't know what uh, could happen. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, molecule come to some stone or something. Yes, or something yes, happens. yes. A, uh, actually, it's pos there are researches that are based on the, the hypothesis that you don't have any more the. A spontaneous formation of asymmetry, but that you have the induction of the asymmetry by external uh, parameters. And but the problem is that if you look uh, on the Earth, typically if you want induction by the quartz crystals of this kind of stuff, it can work. But on the global Earth, you can have right, uh, right crystals and dead crystals, and you do not have reason to have uh, uh, an all uh, right. Uh, earth on the whole left world. So actually, these are mm, yeah, it could work, but only locally. But on a large scale, you will have uh, all the kinds of inductions. So it can work only locally. You had another couple. Was it different? Yeah, but when they meet, they will uh, one of them will win. Oh yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you if have, have hotspots, right? Yes, but if you do not have the amplification mechanism when they meet. You just go back to what's in it, say. Because you don't, you... Uh, work has a computer. Work? I mean, but you depend on heterogeneous systems. In a homogeneous system, you would end up 50, 50, whatever, how you know Yes, that. but the, the problem, the, the larger the system, the closer to the Rathenic state uh, you are, so... No, I think not. I mean, if it's a homogeneous system, it will mm -hmm. still be unstable if you're lucky. Uh, and then the instability will grow over the entire system. You would be terribly lucky because if the D goes and to the left anyway after the first reaction, you will end up 50 50 over the other side. Yes, yes. What do you mean? I mean, it will have to absorb them somewhere. I mean, it has to be heterogeneous. Yes. Yeah, it was about this model you had there. Yes. Uh, you mentioned it was hard, by the way. And yes. And it was with a laser. And what I wonder in that case. Mm, the, the, pro, mm. the activation. Yes, yes, right. yes, but this is typically the, uh, to be the case of, um, of, photo, um, of photochemical reactions where you pump some uh, energy by photons and so that you can... Mm. And, and my, my question there is, yeah. is there, does the polarization matter at all in that pumping process? The what, what matters is just that you input energy, whatever the, the way. Actually, what is important is just you. In, we have to find a way to input energy in the system in a way that it can uh, be use, uh, useful. That's all. So f the way is not very important by itself. I mean, what he's basically saying is, you principally you have to cause these two reactions. But suppose, for example, you yeah. started with polarized light, then it's possible that you may only. Oh, this kind of. Mm. Why, wow, but. Mm. Yeah, so that's a why not? Why not? It, 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 that is something which could also be measured in the laboratory, of course. Yes, yes, but uh, I don't know about this kind of stuff actually. But but generally, all these kind of generally it's the energy we are inputting as a system, the more easy way is by chemical energy actually. But normally lasers are polarized. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yes, but the problem is that photochemistry is generally on very specific reactions and it's difficult to find. You have to see what uh, reaction you can activate by your laser and that after that this activated molecule comes up from interesting stuff. It's, why not? But we have to know what kind of reaction would be useful. So, <coughs> yeah. a question about... Um, whether this is a chemical question or a biological one, and, and the reason I asked that is I'm thinking about these genetic take takeover scenarios, which, yeah. I mean, there's no real weight to any of them, but the idea is at least there. Could it be, or has anybody discussed the idea that, that you start off with a system where chirality is not particularly important, you get a genetic takeover, and part of that, uh, in, implicit in that is the production of something that, that is driven in, in, in one direction. Mm, yeah, you mean that? Uh, I'm thinking of, I mean, yes, yeah, so, so that, uh, a good example is this, you know, this uh, guard model that's been made with lipids. We yeah. have uh, uh, collections of, of, of different types of uh, amplifiers that spontaneously form 
you know, a liquid like the a liquid structure. world of yeah, the liquid world. Yes, I mean, yes. nobody's got any evidence that you can have that. Uh, but they, all they've shown is that, in principle, you could have information being maintained, and, and natural selection could operate without any of the chemistry worked out. Yes. But the point is that because of the, uh, in that sort of model, they envisage it being possible that you could have something like uh, nucleic acids or amino acids being produced as mm -hmm. a side effect of that. In, in which case, it would be down to the, the the chemistry would be delimited by the system being you know based on on, on lipid head groups and so on. Yeah. Is there any? I, uh, this is this is another model? Awesome model actually, but but in this kind of model, the main problem is that it's never very clear where the energy is coming actually, and uh, if you want to have some dynamic inside the chemical system, you will need to, uh, to identify where the energy comes from and how it is used. And it's really a key parameter that is not quite often taken into account in this kind of model. So I certainly agree that there's not. I mean, there's, there's the only thing that's been shown with that model is it can work in principle. And there's no, yeah. no real data on there's that. There's a lot of models that are working in principle. Is, uh, with that kind of a model, can you sidestep the, the whole chirality thing? Because it's not any more a question of sort of uh, crystals in, in some sort of a pure form like this where you have that. You know, yes, but, but the fact that what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, at one point and very early you need uh, one unique chirality to exist right. if you want some structurations. And if you want one unique chirality, you need this activated process. And whatever the way it is, maybe uh, this right. this can be performed through a lipid world. And the, mm. but anyway, you will always need some cycles of reactions. You need well, you need a non-equilibrium system. So it's a selectivity thing. I'm just thinking yeah. in terms of say, for a biologist, right? We're, yeah. we're very dissatisfied with the idea of looking at this from the point of view of amino acids because we can't really see how you get life out of amino acids. Mm -hmm. And of course, things like uh, information bearing molecules as we know them today, like RNA and DNA, are, are mm -hmm. a lot more complicated. They also have chirality, yeah. but uh, you know, there are very few people that are particularly happy with them emerging you know, directly from, from a prebiotic yeah. environment. Yes, yeah, the chemical and, is and, quite and, uh, There's a lot of talk about, you know, either, either you have simpler precursors that are, that are achiral, which may be this difficult, or you yeah. have a, a system like a, a genetic takeover where you have some vaguer type of, instead of linear information, you might have two-dimensional lattices and, and so on. Mm. And that then you would, you would never, you may never have to have that because the system would be specific enough that, that you wouldn't have a plurality problem. It would select it already. I don't know. It's, the, it. mm, it's, it's difficult yeah. because Actually, at one point, you you will you will need to have this kind of, of system to, to occur. Actually, because you can't have uh, any uh, any. Uh, they could already act as, as catalysts, of course, for yeah. uh, for a nucleotide chemistry, and then yeah. they will, of course, act as uh, to, to make only a homo chiral nucleotides, which is exactly the step that you want to accomplish in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Exactly. So that would be the problem mm -hmm. if you yeah. are in an ignorant. In a receiving environment, you could never do that. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So the amino acids would have to be in pretty complex chains to be making any of the yeah. parts. <laughs> so no, no, that's not the problem. Maybe not impossible. I think we should uh, not prolong it too much here. Mm -hmm. we, I should uh, point out we will have a program on homochirality uh, next year in February, all of February. There will be a program with world uh, experts on this uh, topic all coming together here at Nordica. So that will provide an environment where we can continue these discussions. But hopefully also when uh, uh, Raphael is back in September. We will have uh, more opportunity to discuss this. So, thanks, Raphael, for your <laughs>